Hello, and welcome to Rehab and Recovery with Dr. Miles Sandoval. I am Dr. Miles Sandoval. I'm a physical therapist specializing in online recovery coaching and meal support to help my clients build a joyful life in recovery from eating disorders and other addictions. I want to take a few videos to focus on neuroplasticity in addiction recovery. And there's a few things I want to talk about with this, but I wanted to start out with a general introduction to neuroplasticity before we go through different principles related to it. And the reason I wanted to start off with a kind of introductory video is because neuroplasticity seems to be a real buzzword these days. And as is so common with buzzwords, the more they circulate in the popular media, the more their meaning can get changed. And so I see online articles or posters on online forums talking about how can I get my brain to do neuroplasticity? How can I rewire my brain for recovery? And it always, it always makes me laugh a little bit because all living brains are always engaging in neuroplasticity. The essence of neuroplasticity is really the principle that through your behavior, you are training your brain to expect more of the same. And a good example of that is, let's say that I decided to start drinking coffee. So every morning at eight o'clock in the morning, I drink a big cup of coffee. After a few Days after a few weeks, my brain is going to start expecting coffee at 8 a.m. And because caffeine is a drug that has tolerance and can cause a physical withdrawal for some people, I might be in for a nasty surprise if I decide to stop drinking that coffee in the future, which is a problem that I'm never going to have personally because I don't plan on to stop drinking coffee. Um, But that expectation doesn't just happen on kind of a functional level. It also results in these little micro changes in the brain at a structural level. So by drinking coffee every day, I train my brain to expect coffee and my brain will make these little micro changes every time I keep up that pattern of coffee at 8 a.m. And the brain has several different ways of doing this. It can increase or decrease the amount of different neurotransmitters that it natively produces, things like serotonin, things like norepinephrine, things like dopamine, based on my behavior. It can also increase or decrease the number of receptors on the receiving neurons for those neurotransmitters. And... Lastly, really it's not lastly, but we'll, we'll talk about the different methods later. But the brain can also allow connections between two neurons to atrophy and ultimately die so that those neurons no longer talk directly to each other. 
And this applies for both positive and negative health behaviors. Instead of coffee, let's say that I decided to get up every morning and meditate for 10 minutes. Every day that I do that, I'm also training my brain to expect more of the same. And many people notice that there comes a point when they get up and if they've been maintaining a practice for some time, they automatically go to that practice. I get up, maybe I make my coffee first, but then it's, it's time to meditate because they've been training their brains that way, which is reflected in those little micro structural changes that we talked about earlier. And I find this to be a beautiful principle in addiction recovery because it means that the more recovery behaviors you practice, the more your brain expects recovery behaviors and its structure will actually change over time to look less like an addicted brain and more like a recovery brain. So if you're in, if you're in early recovery right now and it's feeling really, really hard, I invite you to think of your brain as a dog or a cat, uh, a, a companion animal that you like. And Dog and cat brains undergo neuroplasticity as well. So let's say that you had been feeding your dog or cat a food that's really bad for it, but maybe you didn't know that it was bad for it. So let's say that for some time you've been feeding your dog or cat scraps of bread from the dinner table, which isn't great for animals, but let's say you didn't know. And then one day you find out that bread (laughs) is bad for dogs and cats. So you decide to stop feeding your dog or cat bread at the dinner table. But if you've been doing that every day, giving them bread for weeks, months, or years, that dog or cat doesn't really understand what's happening the day that you stop. It just feels hungry or runs around in circles or might be really, really confused because all it knows is that it's 6 p.m. and it usually gets bread right about now and there's, there's no bread. And in the context of addiction recovery, if you've been using a substance regularly, especially daily, your brain has learned to expect a big neurotransmitter dump when you use that substance. But if you can think of your brain in early recovery as being this, this little likable thing, a companion animal, that's just confused, that just doesn't understand why it's not getting what it used to get. It can make it a little bit easier to, to look at it, to look at yourself really with a sense of compassion because you've been training your brain to do one thing for a considerable amount of time and for all your good intentions, your brain doesn't know 
why you're stopping. It just knows that it usually gets a big neurotransmitter dump at a certain time of day and it's not getting it. And that's not, not a reason or not an excuse to relapse. But see if that analogy allows you to invite a little more compassion for yourself, especially in early recovery. Because if you stick with it, you'll begin to train your brain towards healthy behaviors which become easier and easier and eventually automatic the longer you practice them. We're going to talk about different facets, different individual principles of neuroplasticity in the next few videos. So we'll drill down on that in a little bit more detail. But I hope that analogy was helpful to you. Please like, subscribe, and share with someone you know in early recovery who may need a little bit of self-compassion, inspiration. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you all again very soon.